Hello. Uh, quick uh, update on what I'm working on today. I've changed my location. I'm uh, uh, going to be watching the uh, AFC and NFC uh, division playoff games uh, shortly, and I wanted to be in here so I don't miss any of that. But I'm going to, as I'm doing that, I'm going to be starting to glue together the uh, Plasticville Cathedral from Bachman that I uh, acquired a while ago, and uh, you've seen this sitting on my layout uh, in various stages of assembly. Uh, right now I've taken it apart and I have done some work on it. If you take a look, you'll see that the uh, plastic, there's a, a, a light diffusing plastic film across all of the windows. And what happened was that I received my stained glass order from uh, a seller on eBay, and I'll uh, include a link to that listing uh, in the uh, comment section below. But uh, the stained glass goes up front, right up against where the window openings are, and on the back, I've put this light diffusing film from Woodland Scenics. Uh, that just makes the light uh, much more even across the windows, and instead of having a point source showing on the inside, it just shows more evenly. So that's the light diffusing uh, kit from Woodland Scenic that I'm using. I'm going to be gluing this together and I'll uh, uh, interrupt this video for a little bit now while I get started on that. And as I'm going along, I will uh, uh, include uh, clips, video clips of various stages in the progress. This may be a long-term project because I need to allow time for the glue to dry and cure uh, between pieces as I'm putting pieces together in order to keep everything square and even. So i uh, be right back in a little bit after I've got the first uh, section glued together. Continuing with the gluing on the cathedral, I'm using a square that I've got laying on the, on the waxed paper that I'm using to protect the tabletop from the glue uh, to try to keep the building as square as possible. If anybody's ever built anything, you're aware that uh, not being square can be a real problem. So I'm hopeful that by using that square, having the building butted up against that, that will keep it square so as I put the roof on, which is my next step, I'll be able to get that roof assembled uh, and it'll lay f properly on top of the structure the way it's supposed to. So uh, I'm going to let this cure for a little bit and then I'll come back and uh, show you uh, what it looks like at the next step. I'm going to take the next step, which would be to run a bead of glue uh, down one side for the roof, the one half of the roof, and then put the roof in place and hold it steady for 20 seconds. And we will hope that we are able to get a good tight fit on the roof. This is uh, one of those things that as you get older your hands are not quite as steady as they used to be. And that's just part of uh, the human experience. So uh, we'll try to keep it, keep the bead as close to being on the line as we can. But as I said, the human body ages and as it ages doesn't do the same things it did when it was young. Now let's slide this roof section in place see if we can get it down there. Okay we've got the roof section in place and we need to do a 20 second hold so I'll be sitting here for 20 seconds trying to hold this as tightly as possible and hoping that that's tight enough to get a good fit all the way around and that the glue will set and we will be in business. But 
Uh, one of the things you have to do is be a little bit patient here because I'm not going to know right away whether or not I've got my uh, good secure fit all the way around and I need this side to fit well so that when I put the other side of the roof on it'll line up and connect and it'll fit well. Now there may be a few little cracks in between um, uh, some pieces here and that's uh, not really as serious as you might think because I have a uh, Woodland Scenics light block kit that uh, contains uh, putty strips that I can use to put along on the inside of the structure on any seams where there are light leaks. Uh, light leaks are you know what you really don't want when you've illuminated the structure from the inside and the stained glass windows are glowing and it all looks lovely. Uh, the last thing you want is a big crack somewhere between two pieces that don't fit just perfectly uh, leaking out light and kind of spoiling the whole effect. So Woodland Scenic makes a light block kit that includes the blackout paint that I painted on the inside of the walls to avoid having the walls glowing when it's illuminated from the inside. And it also includes a uh, putty strip that I can put into any cracks uh, that uh, still have light leaks once the uh, building has been fully assembled. And in my experience uh, with uh, buildings that are built and ready, not the kit buildings, but built and ready buildings from Woodland Scenics, there are still a few light leaks that you need to uh, pay attention to and fix up in order to get the, uh, the kind of effect that you really want. So I think I've probably got more than 20 seconds here on this and uh, I'm reluctant to let go but I guess I have to at some point. So let's see how we did. It looks like it's fitting tight there. It looks like it's fitting pretty tight there. Not as tight as I wanted though. This side is still not fitting really tight. I don't know why that is. I'm going to hold it down for a little bit longer just on this side and see what happens. Um, I don't know if it's my imagination or if this is a real uh, effect, but it seemed to me that when I painted the uh, roof that the act of painting it caused it to somehow soften a little bit and warp a little bit. Um, I don't think it's my imagination, but I suppose it could be. Uh, so the roof seemed like it was flatter before I painted it, but it also looked uh, pretty ugly before I painted it, uh, just with the uh, gray color that comes from the factory. Um, not, a, not, not that it's a, a horrible color or anything, but I think painting it uh, really, really makes a, a huge difference in it. So let's see if we've got any better success now. Yeah, it looks like it's holding a little better. So uh, we're going to call that good for now. And I'm going to let this set up for a while and cure. And then I'll come back and uh, do the other side of the roof. And in the meantime, I'm going to go watch some football. I'm back again and I have finished gluing together the uh, cathedral from Bachman Plasticville collection and I have also uh, put a uh, Woodland Scenics just plug light pack on it, battery pack on it to light up a little bit, give you some sense of what it looks like with the lights on. So I'm going to shut off the lights and just let the stained glass uh, show a little better. Uh, it's not going to be perfectly dark in here, but it'll be a uh, better representation of what it's going to look like when it's illuminated, uh, when it is uh, a little bit darker. You can see the uh, uh, lights actually look pretty good on it. I'm going to uh, raise the uh, camera up a little bit and change the elevation, give you a little bit of different views on it. Uh, this is uh, pretty nice, I think. I'm uh, pretty pleased with it. Right now, the lights are laying on the floor 
if you will, inside. Eventually, once it has fully, fully cured, the glue is fully cured, I'll have the light stuck to the inside of the roof and that will give the light a more even effect on all of the windows. You won't see um, kind of the point source that you can see now through some of the windows. But you get a sense, I think, that with the uh, illumination this in the stained glass windows, this is actually going to look pretty nice. So I'm pleased with it. Uh, that will do it for today. We'll uh, call it a day with having that glued together and give it uh, overnight for the glue to fully cure. And then we've got some touch-up painting to do, attach the lights uh, uh, permanently to the inside of the uh, roof, and uh, we'll be able to be ready to put it on the layout. So thanks for watching. Uh, again, as usual, I ask you to please like, click the like below, uh, subscribe, and share the video. And uh, we'll uh, keep the videos coming as we continue to work on our traditional O-Gage Polar Express uh, model train layout. Thanks for watching.